Happy Thanksgiving, people! I hope you're stuffing your face with turkey. If not today, then on Saturday. Well, we celebrated on Saturday because we're in India and it's not a national holiday here,、yeah. is it? No. But we are making pies to feast on. And if you're wondering what Thanksgiving is or the history of it, then be sure to listen to our Thanksgiving special, which is in the feed. So have a listen to the Thanksgiving capsule that we've done. So you done. can learn anything and everything about Thanksgiving. Yes, and quiz your friends at the dining room table. <laughs> But we know the news doesn't stop, and boy, it's been a busy week.、Yep. We're starting with the World Cup finally. Yep, we're going to tell you why the World Cup this year is five months five. late.、Mm-hmm. That's not all. Taiwan is mourning. Mourning, it's serious. Mourning the death of a panda. Not just any panda, panda. but. A peace panda. Yep, it's called panda diplomacy, and we're going to tell you all about it. And there's some entertainment news. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift, and there is some big news that she is not quite happy about. But yeah. Yep. There's been some chaos, some tears, anger, and let's find out how the repercussions are. After the Ticketmaster debacle, you know if you were a Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> And I think she has a song, sort of message about- in a bottle on the Red album. Yes. Well, we also have a story about a message in a bottle, which is found. You won't believe where. No, we're not telling you. Listen to the end of the episode to hear. Listen to the end to hear, Oddball. Alrighty then. Let's get ready to dive, dive on, on in, in for the. Big news story of the week. I'll be ready to play ball. Sports news. Yes, the biggest sporting event in the world has just kicked off. Well, after the Olympics. Oh, that's debatable. According to FIFA, the football federation, the last World Cup was watched by 3.6 billion people. That was half the world in 2018, and the World Cup, like the Olympics, happens once every four years. And、uh, doesn't it usually happen in summer? You're so right. Except this time, the Middle Eastern country of Qatar is hosting the competition, and well, that's a desert. They're playing football or soccer to our U.S. listeners in the desert. That's crazy. That's what many people felt a decade ago when Qatar won the bid. They had to build seven stadiums too. In fact, there were a lot of allegations of bribery and corruption at the time they got the bid. Well, no wonder they've had to hold off playing until November when it gets a little cooler, I guess. But wait, isn't it the middle of the professional football league? The European club season, yes, which most of the best players around the world play in. Hmm, that's going to be tiring. Yep, and sadly for Qatar, that's not the only bit of controversy. Uh oh. This event. Was supposed to be Qatar's big moment to enter the international arena as a major cultural and political player, but instead, it's getting a lot of attention for its abusive treatment of immigrants or migrant workers, which, by the way, make up 85 percent of the country. Would you believe? What? You mean for every 10 people, eight of them are immigrants? Most of them are there for work, and allegedly many are not treated very well. Plus, Qatar even decided at the last minute to ban the sale of beer from the matches, keeping in line with its Muslim conservative values. Despite the fact that many people like to go to a game and drink beer. Hmm. So lots of controversy. Oh, and most recently, the Iranian team. Boldly decided not to sing their national anthem in protest to the violent crackdown on protesters in their country. That's brave. True. Most recently, fans wearing rainbow shirts and hats representing LGBTQ pride were told to remove them, exposing the country's intolerance. Even more remarkably, the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, chose not to air the tournament's opening ceremony. Well, I bet they'll change their tune if England starts playing well and makes it into the finals. <laughs> you got it. At the end of the day, sports will probably triumph, as people will want to watch their teams play, regardless of the politics behind the matches. So, how long does the World Cup last? 
Good question. A whole month, more or less, with the final match set for December 18th. All right, let's shift our focus and look to the sky. GLS, you can resume the clock on your mark. GLS copies. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. After two failed attempts, the Seven, Artemis 1 six, rocket finally five, takes off, heading to the moon. Woohoo! Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Just to be clear, though, no one is actually on board this rocket, are they? Nope. But it is super important because it paves the way for astronauts to once again start visiting the moon. The last visit was half a century ago in 1972. That would be Apollo 17. I bet NASA is so relieved Artemis 1 finally launched. Absolutely. So were our podcasting friends, the Power Kids of Book Power for Kids podcast, who woke up in the middle of the night to see it from their bedroom windows in Florida. Whoa, so cool. Go on, Lonnie. Tell us what that was like. The Artemis rocket took off from Cape Canaveral about 43 miles away from us. That's about 70 kilometers for most people around the world. We didn't think we'd see much, to be honest, but we were wrong. The first thing we saw was the sky get really bright, almost like the sun was coming up. Then a bright blob of light rose above the horizon and up into the sky. We could see it for almost eight minutes, until it disappeared around the curve of the Earth. The rocket had the Orion spacecraft on board, which is currently in lunar orbit and will be returning to Earth on December 11th. From Florida, this is Lonnie Power reporting for Newsy Paloozy. Why, thank you, Lonnie, for that window-side report. What's that? I'll tell you what. That's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight. It's Around Around the the World world in 80 80 Seconds. seconds. Hold In Indonesia, an earthquake shook the hilly region of West Java, killing nearly 300 people and triggering a tsunami warning. Thankfully, the big wave never came, but nearly 150 aftershocks have, making it hard for rescue workers to help find survivors. Just before the U.S. settles down for its annual Thanksgiving feast, The Supreme Court clears the way for ex-President Donald Trump's tax forms to be released to a congressional committee. That's likely to spark some discussions over the turkey dinner. More space news. A special U.S. Space Force plane landed back on Earth after setting a record for orbiting, or circling, the Earth for 908 days. That's two and a half years. The Air Force says the tic-tac-shaped plane launched a satellite and ran several experiments, including trying to use the sun's rays in space to send energy back to Earth. And finally, a very fishy tale as a British man catches quite the goldfish in France. A 67 or 30 kg koi carp to be exact. Yes, it required both his hands to pull it out and take a picture and then release it back into the lake. Well, thank you so much for that. Wait for it. Wait for it. That wibbity wobbly zippity zap rap of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> in case uh, you didn't get that, she said that whippity wappity zippity zappity rap Boring. of what's making headlines. All right, all right. And now, Taiwan is mourning the death of a much loved panda. Not just any panda, but one of two given to Taiwan almost 15 years ago by its longtime enemy, China. (laughs) Okay, drama queen. Let's cut across to our Taiwan correspondent, Yu Ching Liu, who has the story. Go for it, Yu Ching. You're right. China often sends pandas to countries as a gesture of friendship. It's called panda diplomacy. Diplomacy is a fancy word for trying to be friends with someone, or in most cases, some nation. So in 2008, most people here in Taiwan were thrilled when China, our big powerful neighbor, gave us two pandas. 
I mean, who doesn't want to visit a zoo and see those adorable black and white bears named Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan? Many Taiwanese even ignored the fact that their names together mean reunion or unity, a likely reference to China's desire for Taiwan to be controlled by China. But in the last few years, this desire of China has become crystal clear. As I reported on this podcast in episode 111, so when 18-year-old Tuan Tuan started suffering seizures in August, many here felt sad in more ways than one. Now he's died, and many feel that the legacy of diplomacy between China and Taiwan will be continued by his daughters Yuan Zai and Yuan Bao. In Taipei, I'm Yu Ching Liu reporting for Newsy Pelosi. Thanks, Yu Cheng. So the two pandas China gave to Taiwan 15 years ago had babies. Sweet. <laughs> Let's hope they keep the feelings of peace and harmony alive. Now it's the ace part of our podcast. That stands for art, art culture, and entertainment. entertainment, darling. Darling. As if we need any more evidence of just how popular my idol and singer Taylor Swift is, fans trying to buy tickets for her massive upcoming U.S. tour broke the master. As in Ticketmaster, which couldn't handle the virtual crush of fans trying to buy tickets. Or were they just not properly prepared? The pop star said her team had asked Ticketmaster many times if they could handle the number of her fans, and they said they could. They assured her, but they couldn't. Their system kept crashing in the pre-sale so much they had to cancel the main sale. Meaning, people who waited in line for hours and hours virtually wasted all their time because the system crashed. And their hopes dashed with it. Taylor said, and I quote, "It was excruciating for me to just watch mistakes happen." Adding that it was truly amazing that 2.4 million people got tickets, but so annoying that a lot of them felt like they went through several bear attacks to get them. Hmm. For its part, Ticketmaster blamed bots—that is, robots trying to buy in bulk—resulting in 3.5. Billion system requests. They said. I mean, Taylor is a superstar, but I'm not sure half the planet was trying to get tickets when her tour only took place in America. Other people are saying the problem is that Ticketmaster is a monopoly. That means they have no other competitors in the business they're in, and so they can behave the way they want. And that's even made politicians, including U.S. President Biden. Yes, comment that more needs to be done to protect fans who want to buy tickets for an event. I hope by the time I'm old enough to see a concert or when Taylor comes to India, it's all sorted. <laughs> yes, I hope so too. And finally, let's see what the lucky dip machine has for us this week. Step right, step, step right, right, step right. Up. Up. Have a go with the lucky dip machine. The lucky dip machine. What's it going to do today? Eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. Hey, Mama. Hey, Lila. Have you ever put a message in a bottle and thrown it into the ocean and then wondered how long it would take to surface? Actually, I've never done that. Me either. We should though. Yeah, we should. But have you ever thought about leaving a message destined for somebody in the future, somewhere else, in an altogether unexpected place? Uh, no. Well, that's exactly what two workers did in 1887. Excuse me. Yup, two men living in Edinburgh, Scotland, were laying floorboards in a home, and happening to have an empty whiskey bottle around, decided to leave a note inside and cover it up with the floorboards they were laying. As you do. Well, fast forward 135 years, and a plumber was in the same house, cutting a hole in the floorboards to repair a pipe. Luckily, his drill just missed the glass bottle. Phew! Well, what did the message say? Some dastardly deed or super secret? Actually, it was just a simple note. But it thrilled the family, who had to break the bottle open and carefully unravel the paper note. It said, "Whoever finds this bottle may think our dust is blowing along the road." <laughs> In other words, they predicted they'd be long dead, just dust, when it was found. 
Hmm. Anything else? Well, they signed it. James Ritchie and John Grieve laid this floor, but they did not drink the whiskey. And it's time to wrap up the podcast with the, the top, top five facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one. The 2022 FIFA World Cup is underway. It's a huge sporting event that, last time around in 2018, was watched by how many people? 3.6 billion people. Fab fact number two. The World Cup is being held this year in Qatar, which is where? The Middle East. Fab fact number three. Ticketmaster apologizes to Taylor Swift and her fans for the chaos and upset caused when tickets to her upcoming tour went on sale. But many people say the problem is that Ticketmaster do not have any competitors. What's that called? A monopoly. Fab fact number four. After months of delays, NASA finally launches Artemis 1 rocket, which paves the way for astronauts to once again start visiting the moon. The last visit was Apollo 17, which was when? 1972. Fab fact number five. Taiwan is mourning the passing of a beloved panda. China gave the country as a gesture of friendship, which is referred to as what? Panda diplomacy. And don't forget, if you want to test yourself later on, then go to the Lucky Dip page of our website, which is newsypoolusy.com. That's poolusy as in a pool. P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I. And take this quiz online in your own time. I repeat, P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I dot com. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Newsy Paloozy. If you enjoyed this tip in the coolest pool of news and information, then smash that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts. Actually, don't smash it because, um... You might break something. Devices are a lot. Yeah, they're, they're pretty costly. While you're at it, give us a good rating, or better still, leave us a review. And why don't you tell a friend about us? Imagine the fun you could have trying to say... <laughs> as fast as Leela. <laughs> Alrighty then, see you next week in the happy, splashy, giant, Nizzy Paloozy. Woo!